Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in the Jupiter City atmosphere plant searching for a powerful bomb hidden by the criminal Bulger. Commander, listen. Hear that? Oh, I mean, the guys were close to it. Here, this way. There it is. All right. I can figure out how to deactivate this thing. Ten seconds, Commander. It's getting ready to go off. If this isn't the right control, Jupiter City will be blown off the planet. We'll return in just a moment with a thrilling story, The City of Hidden Doom. Space Patrol, as this is Command McCoy, let me ask you something. When Mom and Dad had the breakfast coffee this morning, did you have a good hot drink? You know, you need a real warm-up for all-day power. That's why you should always start the day the space patrol away with a big cup of Nestle's instant cocoa. It's just loaded with good hot nourishment for real energy. And Nestle's makes the greatest hot cocoa you've ever tasted. It's rich, it's smooth, it's delicious. It's really out of this universe. Now, wait till you see what fun it is to fix. Why, Nestle's ever ready is so easy, it just about makes it simple. Now, listen, here's all you do. Just put one, two, three teaspoons of Nestle's in your cup and add hot water. That's all. Now, you're all ready to drink it and get your supply of morning pep. Nestle's Ever Ready is the complete cocoa, too. You add nothing but water because whole milk and sugar are already in it. You ought to see the lineup around here when they sound the Nestle's call. Everybody goes for that delicious Nestle's chocolate flavor. That goes for me, too. Why don't you get the Nestle's Space Patrol habit and ask Mom to stock your galley with Nestle's and drink it regularly, the way we do. And you'll have power to spare. That's Nestle's Ever-Ready Cocoa in the bright red can. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The City of Hidden Doom. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are aboard the Terra 5, bound for the planet Jupiter, where the governors of the five outer planets are holding a conference. Whatever problems these great leaders have to discuss, Buzz knows they are no more important than the one that faces him, as Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. The entire United Planets are at the mercy of a criminal who controls a device that makes matter invisible. Walls and locked doors are no barriers, and delicate warning systems are no restraint to Rolf Bodger in his pursuit of crime. Thinking of this powerful enemy, Happy has been unusually silent on this flight to Jupiter. Worried about Bodger, Happy? You guessed it. For all we know, he might be right on our tail right now in that invisible spaceship of his, and we'd never know it. Yeah, he might be up there. He can go anywhere he wants to and steal whatever he wants. And nobody will know about it until they discover what's missing. Being invisible gives Bodger every advantage. No, not quite. Right. And the crime's committed with no clues at all. We'll know that Bodger did it. Yeah, a lot of good that does. But he can get away with it again and again. And there's another thing to remember. Bodger can steal money while he's invisible, but he can't spend it that way. Yeah. If you could only nab him when he's on a spending spree, you better depend on Bodger's temperament. If he's like most crooks, there'll come a time when he has to show off, make a big public square. But that might not be for weeks or months. You know, Commander, I've been thinking, what's to keep Bodger from coming to the governor's conference? Being invisible, he could be right in the room listening to secret information. That's one reason we're going to be there, huh? But if he's invisible, what can we do? Have forgotten those belts and electronic spectacles we took from Bodger's men? Hey, that's I... right. If Bodger turns on that high frequency field to make himself invisible, we'll be invisible, too. And we can see Bodger and capture him. Well, we couldn't fool Bodger that easily. Besides, I wanted to think I've come to Jupiter City to guard the governor. To give us freedom of movement for a plan I put into operation. A plan to trap Bodger? Yeah. He's got big ideas. we need more equipment. Equipment and materials that are hard to get. Yeah, for his frequency field transmitters and the control box. Right. Our security lab technicians have examined a few pieces of Bodger's paraphernalia to be captured. They don't know how it works, but they know the materials that go into it. Now, here's the general idea, I mean. In the city of Thuban, on the planet Saturn, Rolf Bodger set up temporary headquarters almost next door to the local space patrol unit. 
Working at his desk, Voyager seems to be completely unaware that a visitor is materializing out of nothingness only a few feet away. As the visitor turns the control on the belt, Voyager picks a switch on a panel at his right. Yes, Rubek, what is it? Well, Commander Corey is in Jupiter City. My Corey is at the governor's conference. Major Robertson, the security chief, will act as executive officer at Terra headquarters. Hmm. Did you find out anything else? No. I didn't wander around because I didn't want to step outside the beam and suddenly find myself visible with the space patrol guards all around me. So Corey's guarding the governor, huh? Mm-hmm. We are <laughs> blasting off right away for Jupiter City. But Corey's there. Didn't you just say I that? said to listen. Now. I have managed to pick up some very interesting information. Information about the shipment of some very hard to get electronics equipment. Yes? The kind. Element we can use in our transmitters. Where is it? In the warehouse, twenty three at Jupiter City Spaceport. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the plan I worked out. When we get to Jupiter City, we'll get a large surface truck. A van. There will be a field transmitter in the truck to make it invisible. That's great. Park it close to the warehouse, fill it up with invisible equipment, take it to our spaceship and blast off. During the few short hours of night on Jupiter, the small warehouse, number 23, is deserted. The boss and Happy wait in a tiny locked office, each of them wearing a belt that, when energized by an ultra-vibration field, will make them invisible. On their foreheads, ready to be snapped into place over their eyes, are the special electronic spectacles that let a totally invisible person see ordinary matter as well as other invisible objects. Happy peers through a small hole in the office partition, watching a stack of crates. Hmm? What is it, sir? It's starting to fade out. Oh. So are you, Commander. I'm becoming invisible. I mean, our belts are picking up radiation from our soldiers passing out. I must be outside the warehouse and I put the spectacles in the case of I touch back of the equipment. Yes, sir. Somebody just stepped through the wall of the warehouse, sir. Is that the one? Is it the other? No, sir. I don't have a sign of the spectacles in the case. I'm looking for the equipment now. Nobody in the office, will you? All right. Get busy and load the van. Some of those boxes are pretty big. I may need some help. I am not leaving the truck unless I have to. Get busy. All right. Rubeck makes trip after trip from warehouse to truck while Voger watches from the cab. But when the van is full, Buzz and Happy climb aboard. Invisible men in an invisible truck. Everything's all right, Roger. Let's get going. All right. Well, it looks like it is a profitable night's work, Rubeck. Yes, sir. 
a profitable night work. In the dark interior of the van, Buzz and Happy are aware only of motion and have swerved from side to side as the big truck rumbles to an unknown destination. After several moments, it comes to a stop. Go for a minute through back. Don't you want it unloaded? It will be all right here in the garage. Come on. Oh, all right. Reach for your weapon. Bojer. Keep your blast around them, Rubek. The trick backfired for you. Now you're in my trap. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, hey, here comes Tony Sides. <laughs> I'll be. He's growing a mustache. Who? Me, Captain Juvel? What do you mean? Why, you sure have. Ah, gee whiz. That's no mustache. That's some Nestle's cocoa. You see, I had a cup just a few minutes ago. Well, I guess I was in such a hurry to drink it, I got some on my upper lip. I'll lick it off. Mmm. Gee, that's good. See, that's what everybody says, Tony. Nestle's Ever Ready makes the best cocoa in the universe. It's so rich, so chocolatey, and so smooth. Since we got the space patrol habit at our house, all my brothers and sisters drink Nestle's cocoa for breakfast. We love the way it tastes, and boy, we sure love the pep it gives us. Starting the day with a hot drink is real smart, especially when that drink is Nestle's cocoa. You said it, and Nestle's Ever Ready is so easy to fix, it practically makes itself. You just put one, two, three spoonfuls in your cup and add hot water, and that's all there is to it. Milk and sugar are already in Nestle's, so you don't have to add a thing. Say, as long as Nestle's cocoa is so good and so easy to fix, well, I mean... You mean we ought to fix us some real fast and maybe both get mustaches? You bet. Gang, how about you? If you haven't tried the Space Patrol way to start the day, don't wait anymore. Chow up for delicious Nestle's cocoa. Ask your mom to get Nestle's in the bright red can. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure of the City of Hidden Doom. By means of an electromagnetic field that renders matter invisible, Ralph Bodger and his accomplice Rubeck were able to steal electromagnetic equipment from a warehouse at the Jupiter City spaceport. Hoping to capture the criminals, Buzz and Happy hid in the trunk. When the vehicle halted, the space patrollers thought Bodger and Rubeck had temporarily left the scene. Upon leaping from the truck, however, Buzz and Happy were surprised by the criminals who rushed them with blast guns. That's it, Cody. Hold your hands high. You too, go that. Take their weapons to the bank. All right. Well, how about those belts they're wearing? Remove them. They won't be needing them anymore. What are you going to do when the space patrol traces this van here to the garage, boys? Eh? The van cannot be traced, Corey. It was driven here with the invisibility field down. When did you find out we were in the truck? When I was loading it back at the warehouse. I saw your duck behind a box cadet, so I pretended to come back and check the warehouse once more. Get into that room, Commander. Go on. You heard of me. Both of you, get moving. I will lock you in here while I can to a small errand. And you'll find out for yourself that it is impossible to escape. You can shout and pound all you want. No one will hear you. In case someone calls while you're out, what do we tell them? Well, you can just tell them that we are helping ourselves to the vault at the Jupiter City Bank. But don't worry. No one will be here asking for us. The Jupiter City Bank? Well, that's one of the best guarded banks in the United Planets. Yes, I know. But we can walk right through Endurium Wall. 
calmly help ourselves and walk out. We won't even put them along. We'll see us soon, Cory, for the last time. Shut the door, Ruben. One place we haven't looked at. Unless there's a trap door in the floor, I don't know where it'd be. There's a beam running across the ceiling. I'll boost it up you can. Oh, sure, sure, but I don't see what... You haven't much it. time. Just sit on my shoulder. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, Commander. All right, Hap. Get along the top of the beam. I'll walk from one side of the room to the other. I don't think we'll find anything. There's barely enough room for my fingers between the beam and the ceiling. Cover every inch very carefully. Find anything? Just dust. Spider webs. I'll move farther down. Hey, hold it, Commander. Here's something. It's a smooth strip of metal. Yeah, I guess it's... Whoa, whoa. Oh, it. Endurium bomb. Jump down, half. This may do it. <coughs> Not very big, sir. You couldn't hammer the door down with that. Yeah, but it may be thin enough to strip to the track of the hinge side of the door. If endurium doesn't bend, we may have an effective pull bar. So let's try it. Come on out. I said, come on out. You've got something behind your back, Corey. And you will notice I have a blaster in my hand. Now drop whatever it is you are hiding and don't come any closer. Now if you don't drop that tool or whatever it is, I'll fire. All right, See, I returned just in time. By the way, Commander, our visit to the bank was quite profitable. I am now a millionaire. Soldier, soldier, we've been tricked. What do you mean? It's quick, you took from the warehouse. There's nothing in them but junk. What? There's a couple of boxes. It's nothing but scrap metal and some old useless electronics. Threw equipment. back, you fool. You loaded the wrong crate. No, I didn't. The numbers checked the list you gave me. Got it. You had something to do with this. You didn't think I was going to give you new equipment, did you? So, that's how you happened to be in the warehouse, huh? You planted that information on, on one of my agents. Right. I found out who he was from one of your men we've captured. Why, you... Watch it, Bojer. You'll blow a gasket. Well, I show you that nobody makes a fool of Ralph Bojer. Your life isn't enough to pay for this, Randall Corey. The entire city is going to pay the penalty. What are you talking about? The United Planets are going to learn to respect me. And to teach them that lesson, I'm going to destroy Jupiter City. Wait a minute, Bojan. Not... Shut up, Ruben. Those explosives in the subcellar of this building. We are going to get them. There isn't enough there to destroy a city this size. And anyway, there's hey, no chance. one bomb will do the job. If it's exploded in the right place. In the atmosphere plant. But you can't be serious. You know what will happen if that plant's blown up? Of course. The atmosphere shell will be shattered. The heavy poisonous gases of Jupiter will pour into the city. This mass murder of innocent people, what good is it going to do you? It will teach the entire universe to folly of defying Ralph Boja. Listen, Boja. What about us? When the city down around our own heads isn't You going idiot! To... You don't think I intend to stay here, do you? By the time the bomb explodes, we'll be thousands of deals away from Jupiter. Go back, listen to me. Don't let this maniac force you to... Shut up! I know what I'm doing. After you unload that junk out of the van, you are going to help Rubek bring the bomb up from the cellar. Moments later, an invisible truck bearing its deadly cargo rolls through the streets of the unsuspecting city toward the atmosphere plant. Leaving Rubek at the truck to direct the protecting beam of invisibility, Bodger forces Buzz and Happy to carry the bomb to a vital part of the building. Just keep going, gentlemen. A little faster, please. Well, how can we go faster? We can't even see. Why didn't you let us wear those electronic spectacles? You might be distracted. Just a few steps more. There. Set the bomb down. Now, stand back. 
I'm going to set the timing device. And just remember, I'm still covering you with this blaster, so don't attempt anything daring. How much time are you giving? Just a half an hour. The bomb will explode at 1,600 hours. You may be interested to know that it is resting in a hollow space between two thick concrete walls. So no one could possibly find it. Exactly. And also, that it will do the most damage. Now, let us return to the truck. I'm rather anxious to get to the spaceport and blast off. I trust you understand. Driven by Bolger, the invisible truck races to the spaceport, with Paz and Happy in the rear under the watchful eyes of Rubeck. As the truck goes to a stop, Bolger calls back to his miniature space ball. Everything okay back there, Rubeck? Yes. You wait here in the truck until I get the spaceship ready for blast off. I've loosened the bracket on the invisibility field transmitter so you can carry up the fuel to the ship. All right. And remember... Keep that invisibility fill down until you're aboard the ship. Yes, yes, I know. Get going, Bozer. Okay. I take care of the money. When you leave the truck, lock Corey and the cadet inside. I'll see you later. Bozer out. Rubeck, listen. You don't want the destruction of an entire city on your conscience. Let's go back and deactivate that bomb. Are you crazy? Even if I wanted to, I couldn't find it. I was in the truck, remember? And you two weren't wearing electronic spectacles, so you couldn't find it either. At least we could try. Yes. What have you got to lose? It's different. I'm getting aboard that ship of Bolger. And my share of a million credits. Rubeck, listen. Bolger will double cross you sooner or later. He's done it to the other guy. Who... I'm getting ready to run for the ship when I hear the word from Bolger. I'm getting out of the truck. I want you to hand me that field transmitter. Just remember, I've got this blaster ready. All right, Corey. Bring me the transmitter. Okay. It's rather heavy. <laughs> Corey, you clumsy fool. You shut off the field. Well, so I have. Rubeck, what's the matter with you? Why did you cut off that field? Are you ready to blast off? You idiot. What do you think the guards will do when they see the big truck suddenly appear out of nothing in the middle of the blast off trip? Corey did it. Shall I come aboard now? You bungler. I can see two patrol cars heading this way now. To take the truck off the strip, I'm blasting off. No, Bozer. Wait for me. The bomb. You can't get to him. Wait, Bozer, wait! It's done for We're in the same fix we are now, Rebeck. Might as well help us find that bomb. I, I've still got a chance. A small cut of cruiser over there. I'm blasting off when I catch up with Bozer. Wait. That satchel there in the truck. <laughs> the joke's on Bozer. He took the, the wrong satchel. The bank money's in this one. Come on, or I'll blast you! Anybody tries to stop me, I'll blast him to bits. So long, Commander. Commander, can't we do anything to stop him? I think so. I've got my pair of those electronic spectacles. Somewhere here in the truck. Yes, sir. I don't think it's just being transferred over the work of that. And it's on. I don't think I can focus it on you, Ben. Here are the goggles, sir. Oh, thanks. Find a pair for yourself. The truck is going to be invisible in a few seconds. But then the patrol cars won't see us. That's not important now, Hap. Let me have that miniature space of phone. Yes, sir. Commander, Rubeck's almost at the cruiser. Rubeck, this is Commander Corey. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks for making me invisible. How do you think you're going to operate a spaceship when your hands will pass completely through the controls? What? Remember, the ship will still be solid matter, and you're practically a phantom, a ghost. Corey, cut off that field. I'm getting the orders now. You're going to help us locate that bomb. It's your only chance to save your own skin. All right. You win, Corey. Now throw that blaster down and come back to the truck. Well, the rocket commander, it's 10 minutes to 1600. We've got 10 minutes to save Jupiter City. With the thoroughly frightened Rubeck between them in the front seat of the truck, Buzz and Happy rush the huge invisible vehicle through the streets to the atmosphere plant. Then they watch carefully as Rubeck, trembling with fear, adjusts the transmitter, projecting a beam of invisibility through a solid structure of the plant. There. Uh, that's the way I had it adjusted before. All right. Come on, Rubeck. Let's get that bomb. Uh, I'll wait here at the transmitter. Something may go wrong. It's sure to go wrong if you're here. Yeah, after we shut the bomb off, you'd cut the field transmitter and leave us stuck somewhere inside a concrete wall. No. No, I promise. You're taking no chances. Come on. No. Well, I won't go in there without someone watching. 
that want to be buried alive. We haven't got time to argue, Rubeck. Let go of me! This will keep you quiet. <clears throat> I hope he stays out cold until we get back. If we don't hurry, we won't get there. In two minutes, I'd bomb a boy. Come on, Hap. I sure hope we're going in the right direction. In the distance we walked with Boja, the bomb must be in the east part of the building. Oh, that isn't much help. It would take hours to search between all the walls, and we've only got a minute. Now, wait, Hap. Remember, Boja made us turn to the left. Keep us from going down a ramp to the third level. Yeah, that's right. That means we're on the second level. That's this one. I know where it is now, Hap. Hurry. I hope you're right, Commander. Oh, I'll look at the time. In a few seconds, that bomb is going to blow Jupiter City clear off the planet. There's the ramp, Happy. Now turn left, right through this wall. Yes, sir. Now we're in the space between two walls. Come on, listen. Hear that? A timing device. We're close to it. Here, this way. There it is. I don't know if I can figure out how to deactivate this thing. Ten seconds, Commander. It's getting ready to go off. If this isn't the right control, we're finished. Commander, this is something I never thought I'd be able to see. What is it, Peter? It's now ten seconds after 1600. Right. Time to get to work. I love this bomb. Back up to the truck. Put it over to the munitions. Come on, Hey, Rubik, wake up. Snap out of it. You've slept long enough. The bomb. What about the bomb? Oh, it's all taken care of. Safe and deactivated in the back of the truck. Sit up, Rubek. I'm driving you to headquarters. Whenever I get my hands on him. Oh, you'll be seeing him very soon, Rubek, at the criminal rehab center. Right, Hap. Now that we've got an invisibility field transmitter, we can fight Boger with his own weapons. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Space Patrollers, can you pass this quiz? What does every active, alert fellow and girl need every single morning? A good hot breakfast drink. Right. Now, what's the best hot breakfast drink there is? Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa. 100% correct. It's an easy quiz because we all know that for real warm-up pep, you want to start your day the Nestle way. Just put one, two, three spoonfuls of Nestle in your cup, add hot water, and it's all made, all ready to drink. And man, what sensational flavor. Rich, chocolatey, delicious. There's no other drink like it. Why don't you tell Mom about Nestle? Remember, the rich whole milk and sugar are already in it, so you don't add a thing but water. And here's the final question. What do you look for at your grocery store? Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa. Bright red can. Nestle's Ever Ready. You said it. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are on Neptune following the criminal Ralph Boger into a deserted factory building. An invisibility transmitter concealed outside enables them to trail Boger through the solid walls of a huge metal tank. Wow, it's sure dark in here. Now's a chance to close in on Boger. Let me step through the other side of the tank, rush him. Yes, sir. The wall is solid. We can't get through. Something happened to our invisibility field transmitter. We're sealed inside the tank. Be with us again next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, Escape from Neptune. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer, Bela Kovach, and Tony Sides. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> this week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's chocolate bars. <laughs> this program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.